What inspired your passion for wine, Judy? We got you started in Yeah, I wonder what's the start of it. One of those things that sort of happened, uh, we planted vines on our property as a hobby, strictly as a hobby. About 450 vines we planted, not really knowing anything about viticulture. Uh, we actually bought a book and followed the instructions, uh, which is probably not a really good way to go about it. <laughs> also, 450 is a bit too many for a hobby. About 100 vines would be more than enough, so we had this, these struggling little vines down there. And they did struggle because we probably did everything wrong. Uh, but sometime during, over those first few years, we sort of got a bit interested in it and started looking at the potential of our site. Uh, started getting soil tests, taking temperature readings, starting to talk to consultants about whether this would possibly be a site for growing grapes in a commercial manner for winemaking. Uh, to be perfectly honest, we probably were treated with a bit of scepticism about whether we'd be actually be able to pull it off. Uh, we did our viticulture course and started planting more seriously in 97. But that original block of vines we planted, we still pick fruit from, and uh, they're as good as anything else on the vineyard. Oh, good. So you've probably had your your best and your worst wine experiences in amongst that learning process. <laughs> oh, definitely a steep learning curve on the, uh, the growing of, of the fruit for making wine. And then when you take that next step and you start learning the intricacies of wine making, even though you're not actually doing it yourself, because we do use contract winemaker to make our wine, but you're learning all the time and, and you're reading, picking up on ideas, talking to people. And then the third steep learning curve, of course, is when you go to start to market your wine and sell your wine, set up a cellar door. Uh, it's just like continually updating your skills, uh, whether it's out in the vineyard or in the winery or or here at the cellar door. Mm, always challenging. <laughs> Definitely challenging, but also very interesting and exciting because here we are approaching vintage 2009, which is a, yet another challenging one. Seems like every year it's challenging in a different way. Vintage is going to be a little bit later for us this year. Uh, the fruit's looking fairly good. Uh, this, um, I, th I think we've been not affected as much by the hen and chicken situation as a lot of vineyards this year, probably because we are later, we're a later site, and our flowering wasn't affected quite so much. So some of our varieties are totally unaffected and look as good as ever, and others, yeah, there, there's a little bit of um, berry size variation, but we're not too concerned. The crop level is probably not as high as last year, but probably on par with an average year. So we're quite happy with how things look now. We're keeping our fingers crossed for lots more sunny days, <laughs> uh, not too much rain, uh, not too cold overnight, and we'll be picking one into May. Yes, those long autumn, summer, summer and autumn days that you get down here in Tassie. Do you have a um, favourite food and wine combination at the moment? Ah, food and wine combination. Uh, I think... Um, I have a, a couple really. As I did mention the Schoenberger, uh, it's not actually a wine for me because I'm a person who likes to dry white. It's not a, a wine that I will just sit down and have a glass of. But as I mentioned before, with your favourite Thai curry, it's just perfect. It really is a lovely match. Uh, Pinot Gris, uh, I really do like that with my richer seafood dishes and it is particularly good with that. Uh, but now Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir I, I just think it is very food friendly and I can think of a whole range of things that I like to have it with. Uh, it's always considered to be a classic match with salmon, uh, not salmon, that's Pinot Gris, uh, a classic match with duck, uh, but, and I, I do really like it with duck, um, but I, I can even have Pinot Noir with um, anything slightly char grilled. Uh, some of my favourite fish dishes uh, I enjoy with Pinot Noir and uh, the old family lamb roast. <laughs> I'll have Pinot Noir with that. Oh, okay. Now, um, past or present, who would you most like to sit and have a drink with? <laughs> oh my goodness, that's such a question, isn't it? <laughs> past or present, who would yeah, I like to sit and have it? a drink with? Yeah. Wouldn't really have to be any particular person, someone that made me laugh probably. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, so um, I, I don't. Um, let me think. Who would I like to sit and have a drink with? Mm. Look, probably just. I enjoy drinking with friends. So you can sit around and have. Be yourself, feel relaxed. Yes. Have some nice food and have some nice wine. 
wouldn't need to be uh, a celebrity of any sort. I think I'd be more comfortable just sitting down with friends and <laughs> okay. a glass of wine. Okay, thank you, Judy. <laughs> it's okay.